All right. Good afternoon. Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Hey, man. How you doing? Yeah. Made it through halfway through the week. That's good. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. why? Because I've been doing some kick-ass kick -ass workouts. And I know this sounds silly, but, you know, we started doing some water aerobics. And I thought, oh, this is a wimpy class, right? Kicks your butt. I mean, I can't believe it. I mean, I was like coming out of so sore because you're working resistance in the water. And which is also cool is, you know, I get to practice my kicks in the water. So uh, that's good also to be able to do that. You know, as you get older, you got to, we did so much damage in our joints, Ron, Larry, you know, early years that I'm trying to look for a little happy medium. Like I'm still teaching martial arts. I'm still working out hard, but I got to find other things to do that's not too intense on my joints. Uh, what do you think of hot yoga? You know, like the whole sweat thing. I loved hot yoga, but Jesus, man, there was sometimes it was like so hot and I was in there sweating. and I was like, oh my God, I can't breathe. Yeah, well, so I, I have access to a hot tub now, so I'll go in just a stretch. So it's big enough to where I can like try to get like just either front splits or, or, or you know, side splits. And uh, I do go further. Like, I mean, I'll warm up, but I try stretching in the garage and I'm at that point where I'm losing flexibility and I hate it. So I'm actually working extra at getting it back. And it's just in the hot tub, I'm like, I could feel myself just let go more. And uh, it made me think maybe I need to join a little, you know, uh, one of the hot yoga classes. I, I'm, I was reluctant because uh, have you seen like those documentaries on Bikram? Have you seen this? It's crazy. Oh, watch it. It's it, he, he's kind of a sexual predator and he, they're after him in America. He had to split. So I think it got a bad rap for because of that. But I know some people who are really into it. And, uh, you know, I hear good and bad, you know, just like anything else. But I mean, sometimes they're like, just it's so bad. You feel like you're, you can't breathe at all. Well, you know, it was OK for me. Like when I, we lived in Washington, when it wasn't raining, you know, and we took it. But if it was raining and the humidity would get so humid in there that I would be like just sometimes nauseous. And I'd tell them, oh, God, I just like it's just. I hate it. I'd love to do, do it, but I don't mind on the dry days, like even the winter when it's cold out and it's dry. But when it got wet, somehow that inside that room, it was like unbearable. And now at the club, they've got hot yoga, but they got a kind of a medium that only goes up to maybe 95 degrees. So I'm going to try that. But we did this other, this class that was, uh, it was called yin yang kind of style. And I thought, oh, this is a cool class. Let's do this, Deb. And so we get in there, you know, and the first, I, I had to go run to the bathroom. I came back. Deb was already sitting there. And I'm just like watching everybody. It's dark in there with the candles. So I cross my legs. Everyone's crossing. I'm just sitting there, you know, like 10 minutes go by. I'm like, what are we doing? And then she goes, okay, now put your heels together. Open up your chakras. All this, let go. And I'm like, okay. And we hold a stretch for 10 minutes. And I'm like looking over another. And then I look over at Deb. And I can just look at her and tell her she's pissed. Thinking, why did you sign us up for this stupid class? <laughs> right? We're not, We're just holding a stretch. And I go, and I'm thinking, I could do this at home. But, you know, that this class is a whole hour. And it's the same stretch as we do in our class. And I'm like, well, I can't sit here for a whole hour and just hold a stretch for every couple of poses, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think you were with me uh, at one of Fred Degerberg's camps. And the yo the yoga master came. Do you remember that thing? Yeah, it was at the university or somewhere, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I remember he had us do the oddest pose. It was like picture going in almost like a butterfly, but where your feet are together. And you got to balance. Were you there for that? And yeah, I was. The edges of your feet. It, it was so painful and horrible. And all I can remember is I like kind of holding stuff and trying to balance myself. And it was so painful. And, and I'm like, and he walked up to me and he, he kind of scolded me. He's like, stop with the monkey mind. And I was like, you know, and, and I got to admit, my mind was jumping everywhere because I couldn't get comfortable. It was killing me. It was hurting me. And, and I couldn't concentrate on letting go and all this stuff. I wasn't. I guess flexible enough for that. I don't know, but he 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 wasn't too happy with my yoga. So that was the year my my son Chris came with me and he was going for a second don, yeah. and he wasn't used to grappling. So everybody was grappling him, and I don't know if you remember, but he started hyperventilating, and I was so worried because he goes, "This I can't breathe, I can't breathe," and it was hot in there, and he's not wear, he's wearing he's wearing jujitsu gi, oh, you know, wow. and everybody's like trying to, you know, I'm like, oh geez, I hope he's okay because it, it was hot in there, you know. I mean, that was kind of like hot yoga in that that room we were in. It was like. Yeah. 
I, that was a long time ago. My uh, my favorite yoga experience was a uh, actually it was one of my earliest yoga experiences too. But but we were on a, a cruise ship in the middle of a tropical storm, trying to like do yoga, you know. And so we're balancing on one foot. <laughs> it's like <laughs> oh, uh, crazy. Yeah. So I mean, I, I mean, I think that you know we we got a lot of people in the audience as you're getting older. I mean. You know, we're younger, we're real macho, we're kicking the crap out of the tie pads. We're just everything. Is, and now we're paying for it as we get older, you know. I mean, everything, so got, ha, everything has a cost. It yeah. does. And, and uh, I, how many martial artists do you know that have had hip replacement? I know a lot. A lot. I know. Of course, I had bilateral knee replacements because kicking. And, you know, you also learn there's a good way to kick and not a bad way. And I think when I first started, I was doing Taekwondo. So it was like a, a lot of snapping kick. And then, you know, Muay Thai started leading with more of my knee and not getting the snap. Well, I tell my students all the time, like, you know, learn to kick better to preserve your body. Learn to punch better. Don't punch with the shoulders. Start using your body into it so that you're not taking all the impact in the joints. Well, when I was younger, didn't know all that. I was just punching as hard as I could on heavy bags, shoulder replacement. And this one's got to replace. So, you know, if, 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 but Deb says, well, were you done it differently if you known that? And I go, Probably not. I just kicked the crap out of type ads like I did. You know, you know the whole forewarn being forearmed. I'd, I'd probably do everything the same way. I yeah. would. You know, I, uh, there there's some things that that I'm honestly paying for. You know, one of the worst things, and and I love him to death. I love Punungu Edgar Saluki, but he had us do those galvanized water pipes, and they were the same size as Kali sticks, but they were so heavy. I've got tennis elbow so bad in one of my elbows now. And I've, I've found a few, uh, a few cool stretches that'll help, but it plagues me now. I, I think about it all the time. I'm, I'm doing something like going, I, I remember exactly when it happened. Do you have those injuries too? It's like you're yeah. training and it wasn't I, like, I, I'm, it, yeah. Leo guy, he made you do the same thing, right? <laughs> those, yeah. like, oh, you get these big pi pipes and I'm going, Oh God, and it's just killing my, you know, I got tendonitis. I got the shoulder, you yeah. know, cause that's the way those guys train, but is it a really smart way to train? You know, I don't know. It's like, they gotta be, well, Purungu has gone, but I yeah. mean, I bet you guy, he feels it real bad today. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, I mean, you know, my father-in-law, he'll, he'll come back and, or come by and he's like, my back is just killing me. And, you know, and he, he blames Bruce Lee for the beginning of it. But, you know, we, we all know that we've just tortured our bodies. Who knows where, you know, when it started, you, you remember when you felt it, but I wonder where it initially came from that's the you know what i kind of always wonder about think about the days way back pka and all that when we're, we're kickboxing i mean it's so changed now because in mma you can be on the ground and your head's down there and people are beating the shit out of your head man and your neck it's got to be i mean arthritis when they get older i'm just thinking that's because there's nowhere that head to, to to recoil to right when it's sitting down on the mat and you're punching it, it the the injuries that they're going to get now where they say oh my neck hurts i, I think you know, when they get our age, you're going to be like, like this, you know, because I've got arthritis in my neck again from just taking some hits when I was younger. And, you know, I, I was so macho, I'd go in and spar someone and like, let them hit me with a jab or something. Just kind of, yeah, is that it? You know, well, now I look back oh, and go, that was stupid, stupid, stupid. I know. I know. I, I've been through a lot of that where I was just like, you know, you know, uh, do, you, do, you, do you know Mark Scully? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, crazy Mark, man. Uh, my, my, uh, for guys from Daggerberg, we'll know him right away. Mark Scully was, uh, he made the Olympic boxing team. And then I think Carter boycotted, he couldn't go. Then four years later, he made the Olympic boxing team and he was on a motorcycle screwing around and he fell off it and he, his neck was in a, a, a brace and he missed the second Olympics. And I think he was just mad at the world. But I remember watching classes and he'd be like, go on, jab, jab. And guys are like, jab and cross. And, they're, and he's using his face for a focus mitt. Yeah, and and, and uh, he used to be so articulate. And then he, he had a stroke. But I think they equated it to all that head trauma that he got. But he's he's just lost it now. He's, he drools, he slurs. He talks like this. And, I mean, it's just, it's scary. And, and the best is <laughs> he loves my wife. So anytime Diana's at Daggerberg, you know, he, he, because he has a stroke, can't close his mouth right. So he drools a lot, but he'll see Diana's like, damn. And she's like taking a shower and he wants to hug her. And she's like, I love Mark, but oh God, no, you know, he's like just 
you know, spewing all over. He doesn't mean to, he's sweet. He's nice. But it got to the point where Fred Degerberg stopped people from hitting him. They're like, you're in his class. You do not hit him in the face anymore because he knew that he was accumulating all that damage. And, and I don't know if it was a, why he did it. Maybe he was just mad at the world. Maybe he was just, you know, there was a side of me. I didn't feel like I was working out unless I got tagged real hard, you know? So I'd be like going, going, going. I didn't feel like it was going on until boom, I, whoa, that's good. And they always say it woke you up. I think it did other things. I don't think it wakes you up. (laughs) Well, you know, Mark was just a tough ass guy. I remember when I came with him, you know, and I hear all these stories that Fred would tell about, you know, him going in and taking out the bar with a couple guys. And so I remember we were somewhere down out the group. We all kind of hung in a couple of guys, but Mark's with me. And I think I can't remember who was one other guy. And they were the, the, the guys at the door, the security were giving us a hard time, Mark. And Mark's like to me, goes, he says, let's just go kick their ass and go in there and beat the shit out of them. And I'm like, like, really? I go, I don't want to go to jail over this. I mean, come on, man. Mark, he was ready to go. Let's do it. Come on, man. Let's go, bud. Come on, bro. Let's go kick their ass. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> so. every, every year we used to have a Fred Degerberg's birthday party and we would have it in Chicago, either at the beachfront or they have uh, forest preserves. So all on, uh, on the outskirts of Chicago are, are all these forested areas that are protected and people can go and, hike or camp or barbecue and so we would have it at, at this one forest preserve and I remember there's some bikers there and I think Mark was screwing around on it in his car and he was like revving the engine or he squealed the tire or something and the bikers wanted to come and they wanted to kick his butt and uh so Mark had squealed and drove away and they came over bitching and Fred's like you know you're right I'll say something he's an a-hole and I'll I'll jump on him for it and they're like no we're gonna kick his ass and Fred's like no don't do that don't do that you know and they're, they're like no we're gonna kick his ass he's like no I'm telling you please and the guy goes I don't care what you say we're gonna do it. he goes you're not gonna do it he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna whoop your ass don't do it. And the guy's like, what? And he was taking up the challenge. But then when Mark came back, he's walking back and they're like, that's the asshole right there. And Mark, he got like, ooh, ooh, ah, you want to fight? And, and, and he got to the point where the bikers were running backwards away from him. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's not right. You know, I love the guy, but I mean, he was crazy. It was, it was, it was something to see. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. Seeing these, yeah. all these big gnarly bikers, have want no part of that one skinny little mark you know so, yeah uh, crazy people that aura sometimes you it just is. You, oh man you know those like are the good days though those are the good yeah. days training man i i used to love to go i'd go to fred's and i just love going because at that point i mean he his school was amazing i mean you know the state of the art all the equipment i just it was like a i was a, like a kid in the candy store like get the hit with all the bags you know, the milk jones the timers and all that i just thought it was just the coolest place to go yeah you know? I, I mean half my childhood was inside that place but but uh you know for uh, you ever read a book or what you ever see lock stock and two smoking barrels guy Ritchie movie yeah that was a good one all right you ever see bury the baptist you remember yeah. but that's lenny mclean if you guys are are bored and you want a good read get governor. Uh, it, it's the Lenny McLean story. And that way he played Barry the Baptist and he reminds me of Scully. So if, if you ever want to like, kind of like, if you think I'm making more out of Scully, which I'm not, I'm making less, I've got crazier stories that I just won't say, but, but Scully was just an animal. It, it, it was something to behold watching that man. So get it. It's worth, it's worth the look. Hey, Larry, isn't it time for uh what the f okay so this is what the what the f is this this is you've been seeing this crazy i mean east coast has been having a little bit of crises with gas and long lines and stuff and you know it's funny because every time there's people here there's a shortage what do they do they go out and they hoard and they take and they do stupid ass things like this a laundry basket i mean I've seen people like filling up like grocery bags with gas and just putting like just all these barrels in there. I'm like, I I used to hate putting, if I went up to the gas station and put, you know, like get my two or three gallon can and I had to refill for my lawnmower, I was like paranoid driving back and going, I hope I don't get in an accident or something. And these people are like doing little plastic sacks and I go, you got to be kidding me, right? You're going to go carry gas like that? That's just total stupidity. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that picture, you know, 
I'm sure somebody was playing. I, I just can't. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. great. But I have seen like people hoarding. Um, my manager, uh, Tarek Heitman, he just mailed me a picture that he took of somebody at a gas place just filling up all the cans. And, and I, I knew you were going to uh, uh, talk about this because we talked lightly about what, what, what's the topic that'd be a good topic is this gas thing. And um, you, you know what, it, you do know where it stems from. The, this whole new gas crisis is the Russian hack, right? And uh, I guess the, the, the oil company that was, mo- they were moving something like a hundred million gallons a day and the Russians hacked it and, uh, and it put it down. But, my whole thing is why I know we live in this electronic world, but why is everything got to be online? I mean, you know, it's, it's just, it's crazy that, that it's that vulnerable and to keep it online, they got to come up with something new, but now with people hoarding, I've also learned that prices are going to barrel per barrel gone up by 3% because and it's not even as much the hack. It's just the, the, the panic that people are like, I got to hoard gas and they're going to cause this, this, you know, they're going to drain the supplies. Right. And, and every time suppliers know it, I mean, you know, people will start doing price gouging and selling. I mean, it's like the toilet paper, right? I mean, or yeah. I remember when the pandemic started and I go, oh, I want to go get some, uh, you know, sanitary, you know, disinfecting wipes and I'm going on Amazon and they're like all gone and all of a sudden someone's selling them like for four times the amount. Right. It, it's right. like, you know, people are always taking advantage of the situations. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just crazy. It's just crazy how people get when right. if everyone wouldn't hoard and just got their fair share, got out. I mean, they could manage it, but it's these idiots that go in and, you know, get like six barrels and, and crazy stuff like that. I, I remember I 79. I mean, you know, I, I, I was uh, 16 years old, just got my driver's license and there's no gas. And I was like, what, you know, but I was like, what the F, you know, but uh, I just remember that whole whole fiasco in those lines and it was just nuts it, it, i mean you could be at a mile long line i don't even think i'm exaggerating that that distance it was stupid it was like an, uh, a half day affair just to get gas in your car uh i had remembered i had dirt bikes my friend rob and i we, we had they were like enduros motocross uh but they had light, lights on so they're street legal and we would go up to the forest preserves with the bikes and during the gas crisis, everything was shut down. So what we would do is we would go to each gas station, we'd pull out the nozzle and drain the hose, and we'd get just enough to get there and play around. And we'd have to drain the hose and get get the bike back home just so we had enough gas. But um, yeah. yeah, that was crazy because I was in Texas that time. I was in the service. We didn't feel anything down there. I mean, in San Antonio. But my dad was like, "Oh yeah, I've got to get up at four in the morning and got to go wait for gas." And I'm like. Where I, I we we didn't feel anything in San Antonio, you know. It was so I was like I he would always tell me like oh your lines are big and I got to go get my car and I got to go back again and get your mom's car, you know, filled up and so even even with uh, just just pre this little situation that we got dealt into, you know, I was driving all the way up to Grand Junction, Colorado to teach up there, and then we did a little you know roundabout trip, right, you know. Utah a couple of days down to Arizona and then back over to Texas in about four days. And we hit a bunch of different sites and everything. And I mean, I, we took the truck, you know, the new truck. And so it's a V8, you know what I mean? And so we got, we got fill up a little, few more times and I'm sitting here in like even Colorado and, and Utah and I'm like $3 and something. I'm like, you're kidding me. Right. I can get it for like two twenty back home. This, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I, I think I, looked at the gas thing and thought that they ought to just have a straight across the board, no matter what state you're in, where you're at. I mean, every time I visit Guru Ron, same problem, right? The gas is crazy out there. You know what I mean? $4 it reached. I just filled up yesterday. $4. Why? Why? Why does it need to be four bucks in California and like two? I just paid two forty over here. Uh, like Tarek had just seen it. People are like out there with their all their cans filling it up. And, and yeah, it's just, you know, I think a lot of this is manufactured. I think it's, you know, I can't believe our oil supplies are gone because a week ago somebody hacked us and, and that's all better now. So it's just, you know, I don't know. I, I'm talking from a layman's point of view, but I just don't buy that that we need to pump up the price because of this happening. It's just another excuse in my view. That's what I think. Anyway, so uh, uh, Conrad just said 287 in New York. See, what's up with that? Yeah, because that's less expensive than what I'm paying here in Arizona. 
I got 240 got today at Costco, 240 <clears throat> on the van. Wow. That's pretty good. I wish I had Last that. this time I was paying 223 for diesel and it's over three three to bucks now. And I don't because our gas was always cheaper anywhere I went. You know, you as soon as I left, I'm oh, sorry, Ron. You remember when diesel was less uh than gas? Now why? I don't know if it's because uh maybe additive, something else, but I mean, when I was a kid, diesel was dirt cheap. It was always cheaper yeah. than just regular gasoline. Because it takes less to refine it. There's not enough steps. I mean, you know, jet fuel. I used to work in a refinery one year when I was going to college as kind of a, um, like a, I can't remember, a co-op program where you kind of learned and did things. But yeah, so it's, it's, they don't have to go through the whole fractionation process as they do for gasoline and stuff like that. So it's less labor intensive. It's less work. It was always cheaper. So yeah, I don't understand now. Why is it costing more, you know, when it takes less to get it, you know? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That's what uh, uh, James had said. The same thing is like, look at lumber prices. I was like, I know I, a lot of people did home improvement projects over the lockdown and things like that. But come on, really? I mean, I just drove through a bunch of national forests and different sections, not the national forest part, but the other parts, you just see lumber down, down, down. They were just hacking trees. And that's like, there's not a shortage. Come on. You know, you just know that more people want it. So you're going to jack this up so you can make some money. You, you know what it reminds me of? There's a, a documentary. On, I think it's Netflix, Dirty, Filthy Money. Have you guys seen this? It's so worth watching. There's like seven series. Did you see the maple syrup episode? Yeah. Canada? It, there's an, like what it is, the, they, they price control it and they'll make like an embargo on it. And uh, it ended up, I don't want to give away everything, but it's well worth watching. But somehow the, the New York mob got involved in this maple syrup ripoff because there's a lot of money in it. And uh they were they were replacing the syrup with water because you can't serial number the syrup only like the container it's in and they were draining it and filling it with water and leaving them in there and they, they discovered that millions and millions of dollars of syrup were were lifted out of there it's really a great series you should watch it pretty entertaining pretty informative uh, like you'll learn a lot about a lot of different uh uh, well, seven different topics. And one of them is like those payday loans and, and everything else. But, um, but back to our point with this gas thing, you know, a lot of these, um, of these uh, price hikes and everything are just them saying, you know what, it's time. Let's, let's knock it up some, you know, and, and then they'll lower it when, you know, the, the, it goes in a wave the way they do. It. It's a pretty interesting documentary. Check it out. You'll enjoy it. So, all right, uh, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the dates, our classes. So uh, for those out there that, that are, are on the online training, all right, uh, is, it, is it cool to talk about prices now, guys? Sure. Let me, you want me to go over that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you? And then I'm going to add sure. some. So, you know, we've all been doing different jobs, and one of mine has been marketing and pricing and trying to figure out what a good uh, price structure for everyone is. So we wanted to make um, – put together um, basically a good bundle. And so those that have already been members that had access to that bundle. So what we did is, you know, we made sure that a lot of the, the holes that didn't have material, we, Ron has been filming that to fill all that in. Um, and of course, we'll, we'll be adding some more things as, as time goes on uh, to that. But we figured out, I mean, just the cost for what we have currently in the bundle was running about, uh, 1421 okay 1421 and and we set it up so you can actually buy these courses individually if you want to now but the best sweet deal is obviously being on the, that yearly subscription now ron is doing two classes a month two live zoom classes okay and so uh one will be generally toward kali the other one will be more toward the uh, jiu kundo jkd part so we're kind of uh, going to launch that. Actually, our first one will be June. What was the date? Was that ninth, tenth? Yeah, I, I've got a uh, June 9th at five p.m. So, okay. so that's going to be what I think a Wednesday. Right? Yeah, Wednesday. That's right at five p.m. Night, so five p.m. And we're doing this so that way we can cater to like foreign audience a little bit too for the very first one. Yeah. So if, if they all they're all going to be recorded also, and if you're if you're part of it, you you'll have access to all that material. Uh, the second class is on the 26th at the end of the month at 9 a.m. That's a Saturday. And uh, so the, the, the 9th is going to be JKD, like you said. 
The 26th, we're going to do Kali. All right. And, and I've not decided, I think I might just ask people what they want. If they want, you know, I mean, Kali, it's so vast. So double stick, single stick, stick and dagger, uh, dagger, double dagger, empty hands. You know, we could do the ground stuff. You, you let me know and I'm going to go by what the majority wants. Uh, in the future, I would like to get past, uh, get past that and even do C-Lot or Thai boxing or, or, or some of the MMA stuff. But right now we're going to stick with the bread and butter, Kali and, and JKD. So JKD is yeah. up first. And then again, if you got a wish that you want, uh, if you guys want uh, the dummy or if you want more trapping or if you want kickboxing, you know, you let me know and, and we'll throw that all in there. Okay. Yeah. So the, so the idea, I mean, if you look at the cost, because you can buy these uh, classes individually. I mean, if you look at a cost of uh, new tutorials are running about 69, older ones would be 49. So you, 49 times two, that's like $98 a month, right? Just right there, which comes to about 1,176 for the year. So if you get this, so for 299, which is about 25 a month, you're getting all access and you're getting Ron's classes twice a month, okay? But the real kicker deal is for this launch, for a limited time, we're gonna have a discount code that you'll be able to put in, okay? And we'll have to make sure everyone has access, access to that as of June 1st, our launch day, and that's worth 100 bucks off, that's gonna be 199. So for $16.50, I think, a month, roughly it comes out to. Wait, so wait, it's just amazing. Wait, wait, one more time, how much does that average per month? That that one ninety nine, Larry will come out to about sixteen fifty a month. Okay. So the average person now is paying probably close to double that, right? I mean, darn yep. near. So really close. Yeah. So if, uh, I was going to ask, you know, like uh, uh, or not ask. I was going to bring up the point, uh, bring it out that uh, for people who are grandfathered in and they're like, wait, is this going to cost me more? It's actually going to go down for everybody. And, and yeah, so so that way, you know, it makes it I think more desirable to stay with it and with the extra classes alone, you know, uh, for people like, I know a lot of people get in and they'll kind of run through it and try to see what they could see and then jump, jump out of it. Um, and, and that's cool for them if that's what they're after, but I got a lot of long-term people and they're going to be getting a lot of live classes now as a perk to stay with us and stay, keep doing this. So it's good. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so. I'm excited. That's that's one of the things I think that hooked me right away was not only to have, you know, even as an instructor, have that video reference to, to go back to because, you know, you can't remember everything and you're looking through your notebook trying to find stuff, things like that. Somebody was asking me a question the other day and I just went straight to the online portal, blah, 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 pulled it up, boom. And that's great. But then having like up to date, like, you know, because, you know, things are adapting, things are changing. Like you said, you know, you're calcifying things. All new sorts of ways and to have that and to have like the cutting edge of what you're working on right at our fingertips twice a month live like that's awesome so yeah yeah, yeah. so um be. all right so what what we want to do is we're still going to give the book away correct on top of that so there, there's a lot of little extra perks into being part of this group so um oh, let me just add that to ron be, being a member on a subscription is, is a great deal for you because as certain new products come out we're always going to have uh, a special rate pre-sale for members so it, it's right now even if you don't think about being a member today i would still say get get your email to us so that we can keep you updating what's going on because that's our best communication right and, and letting us know uh and who knows you know what i mean someday facebook may not even be around so you know having our email so that we can get the word out to you is going to be to your advantage because we'll offer special sometimes giveaways um and you'll be checking your email and you go wow i got a cool deal here today it's only 9.95 something that was maybe 39.95 so we're going to plan some of those specials and giveaways uh throughout the year can I show one of the clips? Is that cool? Maybe as a tease? Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, let me pick one for you. So I'm just going to grab a random one. And um, all right, here. Getting up there now. So now we're into number seven, LeBon Laro. All right, stick and dagger. So before, it was all cambiata for the first five. The number six was the roof and the stab. The seven, he's just going to backhand me, and then he's going to stab me. So do it together. Bump, bump. Now it'll go one, two. Okay, do that, one, two. That's what I'm looking for. Later, we'll pick up the pace and it's gonna be a quick one, two. But now, there's different terms in uh, Lameco that we use. One is saboy 
or sunket or pasunket or suet. I've heard it three different ways. The, uh, I've been told by people who know better than me that all three are the same thing. But uh, suet, I go, what is suet? They go, sew it. You're sewing it. I go, oh, and then there's sunkete or pasunket. It means to thread the needle. So really, if he were to go, like, give me an angle one. If you give me the angle one, I thread the needle here. So I'm trying to block the arm, but get to the face and hook thrust it. So when he gives me the back end, same deal. So if it's coming right at me, whoop, I'm coming here, bang. So maybe I might have to lose the face and take it. Maybe I can get the face and it, but training, we don't do the face, okay? So when he goes, I'm gonna go with saboy right now, okay? So saboy, and then I, I stop it right here. So I go bug sock. Then I'm gonna step back in, he goes brassel, bump. And then one, two, three, four, five, like we've been doing, okay? So if I go backhand, he's gonna knock it up away, and then right away. So when I go backhand, it goes bump, bang, and then right away. So he hits the hand with the stick, then he's gonna do a full step in and stab. Don't stay where you're at and stab. You need that range, because I'm gonna be on the move, all right? So I'm gonna go again. One, two, I have to do humpak by loss to get away from it. Then one, two, three, four, five. Okay, David comes to me. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. I go, David, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, and five. So just slow a few times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if I count it all the way through. Okay, so if I back in, he hits it up. He hits the hand, I bang down, then the five count. So he comes at me, I knock it up, I hit. Stab. One, two, three, four, five. He's gonna knock it up, hit, stab. <laughs> he comes at me. Bah, 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 bah. It's okay. Do one more time, please. Come at me. One, two, three, one, two. That's it. I go to him. Bah, bah, yeah. He comes at me. One, two, bah, one, two. That's it, slowly. One and two, stab, I drop. He comes at me, hit, there, there. And that's it. So that's number seven, Le Bon Laro. Good. Nice. So let me just give a caveat to that uh, for people who maybe have never done martial arts, right? And we're bringing you in. We're, we're, we're looking at two different groups. We're looking at people who are more experienced and we're looking at people who never picked up a stick. I mean, so we're taking both people in consideration. But for you people who's been training with Ron for a long time, we got to make sure you get some good stuff that you want, right? Let me explain. If I put up the slower stuff, it's not going to excite people to run. And, and I grabbed it. Actually, that, uh, that clip was not my favorite. I thought I grabbed the really good one. I'm not going to keep playing for you. You'll have to come in and see, what, June 1st, right? That stuff's first. A pair. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I've uploaded. I don't know if you guys have been peeking in there. But uh, I've got that. I'm back to work after we, after we finish this podcast, I'm back to editing. There'll be a lot more going up tonight. So uh, we're, we're collecting a lot of the missing, like one of the, uh, the things we had is on the upper level stuff, there were a lot of like missing pieces and people want to progress through the system. It's all going to be going in there. So you're going to start to see it appear. Mm -hmm. so. And the other thing we did for anyone that was in the old system before we get this moved over, you know, where you're paying 29 a month and we eliminated that, uh, everything's compensated. That's why I suggested we do this hundred dollar discount for everyone in there. So everyone's going to benefit from that. Right. So then you just say, okay, I cancel that and I'm going into the new and you just pay your upfront for the year and then you enjoy it. Right. Um, hey, what was the average per month again? 1650. 1650. Jeez. What you were paying before at 29. Hey, so are you sure we don't want to rethink more. this a little bit? I mean, we, it's not live yet. We could like change it up the price a little bit. Yeah. You know, who knows down the road, but right now uh, I think we want to, we want to really get this thing going and growing. And so that's why we figured, okay, let's make sure all the former members get more, they get more material and they're paying less. Right. And the new members who come in, they don't even know. And, uh, but I think we're going to be able to kind of, you know, the whole goal is to reach both beginners and, and not lose people because, number one, it's too hard for them. So we're going to kind of handhold them through the process and then to keep our members in the past where they figure, well, maybe there's not a lot of new material or, you know, there's some old stuff. We're going to keep changing things and, you know, even some of the old material, reshoot some of that, get it more up to date over time. But our first phase is just get the launch out, get some things that were 
you know, we're missing out of those pieces. And um, I think everyone's be happy with it. And especially, uh, can I say one other thing is the, you know, giving more notes and PDF and ho hopefully someday as Larry's working on, we can hyperlink things that will allow you to, you know, be in a document and click it and go, oh yeah, I need to find out where, you know, the running sets are, bing, and there it is. I mean, you know, a big upgrade. Yeah, you, you know, you you talked about refilming things. Like, like it, there's a lot of reasons I want to refilm because for one, more analog days versus, you know, all the digital make things cleaner. Two, we've evolved. You know, like there's, uh, we, I think we talked about this a little bit uh, uh, with, with uh, I think with Steve Gold, you had mentioned something about the way that you had maybe uh, trained something before the advent of MMA. You know, things evolve, things change. And I changed, like, I don't know how often I irritate my students with, I changed the order again. And they're like, what? You know, and I go, but hey, the whole part, it's research systems, it's martial art research systems. We're going to keep researching and going to keep changing it. And it's the way it was for, look, all three of us are instructors under Guru Dan. How many times has he changed what he's done? He, he does it all the time to me. And and it, it's countless. He keeps going on and changing it. And it was a time that it was making me nuts. And now I love that he did it because it just tells me he's just rethinking it and rethinking it and he's growing and evolving and that's what we need to do. So, um, yeah. So I think refilming a lot of the material is, is a good thing for us to do. So that's going to be happening also. You know, first it. we get the holes all filled. Then we start to refilm stuff. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so the, all right, uh, let's, let's see. We're, we're rapidly running out of time, but we had some other stuff to, to cover. So, um, can I go into power words? Yeah, let's do power words. I would love to go into power words. Uh, we, we, we were talking a little bit before we went on, and we started talking about just, just um, I don't know if it, if it would relate or not, but um, cancel culture to, like, power words. I think it's all kind of one and the same. You know, like, we hear it, it's so politically charged now, cancel culture, and that's not where I'm coming from with it. You guys can go there if you want with it. But... Um, I, I just hear like a lot of uh, the, the negativity and it, what I mean by cancel culture and power words are, let's take traditional martial art. And now I, I was big into the MMA world for a while. I was fighting, you know, like uh, to me on the, I'm not going to say the birth of MMA, but like the, the, the out of the closet with it to where everybody was like, all right, we're doing this. There's now this UFC thing. And, you know, uh, I started hearing people, rag on traditional martial arts and they're going you know ah man these forms you don't do this this way and katas and and i was like yeah and i kind of started to go that way i'm like there are no real katas in jkd which there are but you know i i tend to it's so funny i taught two classes today and i taught forms in it and and what it was is i taught the you know what sayao is in filipino martial arts the dance stuff i started going at it if you, if you guys are silat guys it looks a lot like either the sambuts or, or sometimes the kambangan and i realized that without the forms like there's a ton of times like say i taught somebody be it with weapons or empty hands and they're not getting what i need out of them like i'm going no no just do this just i'm like they can't get it they can't get it and i go I am not doing this one thing. And it was like this little kind of like prearranged little form thing that he had us do. And it gave me that one little nuance and they were missing that element and they couldn't get it. And it really changed it for him. And I go, that helped them a lot. And, and I've had some students uh, who have been with uh, other older JKD instructors and they're like, Oh, Ung Moon, you know, that form that we do that. Yeah, why, why do that? And, I feel there's a lot of value to it for, for a beginner, you know, like we all have to start by learning the alphabet and then spelling words and then going into sentences and paragraphs and chapters and then books. But we can't just say, Hey, write a book right out the gate. So I feel there is a time for that, you know? And then I, I think about, uh, and I'm going to where I'm going into power words are I've had people tell me why are you doing it? Like, all right, I'll go off martial art. I had, I had a teacher in school said, you know, Ron, you're not too smart. He said, you'd probably do good on an assembly line. And, and you take that stuff to heart. You know, I think I was struggling with something, but, you know, maybe she was using it to motivate me, but she, it kind of crushed me for a while. It did for a couple of years. I think I started to like 
do way worse in school. And I finally had a teacher grab me and he goes, you're coming to my class every day afterwards. And I'm like, ah, and, and he forced me into it and he put things out there to where I started getting it and I got it quick. And then my classes came back up. I finally figured out somebody believed in me a little bit and it was the power words. He's like, you can versus you could do an assembly line versus you could do anything. And, and it, to me, it was that change that I needed. And thank God I had him, you know, and if I seen him today, I'd give him a big hug for it because I, I really think that he's the one teacher that probably made the biggest difference in my life. And it, it was by you know, using that one word, you can. You know, Ron, because I, I was in a, a situation when I was in high school, right? And I remember I was in um, biology and, and I, and I didn't like the teacher. She was just a hard ass old lady, you know, and stuff. And, but I always thought I wasn't smart because of the same thing. You know, I mean, I couldn't get it. But then I realized, too, it's also how we learn. Everybody learns different. Some are visual, some are auditory. I mean, just, you know, some needs projects, some need examples. But I remember, you know, I was like, we'd, we'd have to, every day we took a quiz. And part of it is I never studied. You know, I mean, that was part of it. I mean, like, I mean, I didn't get it. Oh, you're supposed to study? And I'd go in there and like, I don't remember it. And I'd flunk. And then we'd have to go up. And then we always, you know, she'd go and like graph your progress. And so it was me and this guy who was like almost in a special ed class that was in the class and he was at the very bottom. I was right next to him, which again made me feel more stupid and I wasn't smart, right? I just assume I'm not, I don't, I'm not smart because look at where I'm at. But, you know, it, it's amazing how, what you say, what teachers can say to you, you know, and she called me one time, you know, you're not going to amount to nothing. Look at you, you know, you're, you look at where you are in life. She's trying to help me, but she's, what is she doing? She's making me feel like I'm just stupid, right? And I can't get it. Yeah, she's affirming all. Uh, well, she put it in your head. Now she's reaffirming that you're, you know, and it's just, it, it's crazy. And you're right. There is all sorts of intelligence. I mean, you got some people who could play instruments beautifully, who may, you know, maybe can't spell the word I, you know, and, and other people are, are great at movement. I mean, there's, there's genius in all of us. You just got to figure out your passion and you want to not be lazy and, and get motivated. And, and I really think, you know, you'll get it. What is it? If you, if you wish for something hard enough, you're going to get it, but just be careful what you wish for. I really, you know, like wished for this martial art thing for me. And, and I don't think I was my early years, I, I don't think I was all that. I mean, nobody's all that in their early years and not that I'm all that now, but I mean, I'm, I'm making a living off it now. And no matter what somebody thinks of my ability or how I am, I mean, it's paying my bills and it's that love that I have for it. And, and I feel it's not work to me. It turns into a job when it's, if I would have got on that assembly line, that would have been a job, mm -hmm. you know? And well, don't you think it's a difference when, when you have to and want to, right? It's like photography. I love it. I want to do it. I'm not having to do it. But a lot of times in school, I hated the fact that, you know, you have to do this. You've got to do this to get this grade. And I, and I was like kind of rebellious. I'm like, why? Why do I have to write this stupid paper? What does it have to do? You know, so I wouldn't do it. And so it would affect my grades. I mean, now, I mean, like I said, I love photography. I'd do it even if I didn't get paid. Right. It's, yeah. it's just like martial arts. We do it if we going to get paid. But I excel in areas that I want to do it, then I have to do it. And you know right. anything that I really want to do, I mean, I'll excel because I'll put a hundred percent into that. But I think when I was in school, I was like, I got why I take biology, you know, why I got to take, you know, this language. Oh, I know, I know. Then, then I've also had. Uh, it's funny, you just knocked me into another thing. I've had somebody criticize all, all the stuff that I do. Why you're doing all these things, you know? And they're they're like, well, you know, I'm a I'm a second degree black belt. Um, somebody's chiming. Um, I, I, the, they're like, I'm a second degree black belt. How, how are you doing that? You know, I've, I've trained a whole lifetime to do this, you know, and my, my, my address back to that is, well, we learn math and history and science and English and all these things at the same time. And we're getting through all that. And it's expected us to ace those courses. Why can't I do all these martial arts? And I was, I mean, you know, my, my time at the, you know, like, I mean, even before the Inasano Academy, but during the Inasano Academy was morning, noon and night. I woke up morning, taught privates, taught class or, or worked out in classes all day long or taught classes at night. I was taking classes and then we locked the school and I went home to bed and, and, and I was getting it <laughs> almost all my waking hours, almost seven days a week for years. And it just, it lit a fire under me going, 
I can make this a reality for me. And it might not have been conducive at that time. You know, the, the, a lot of this was pre Diana, but for a relationship, I think if I had had a relationship, it would have been, you know, because I was given so much to the arts, but it, it, to me, I look at it like that's my doctorates. You know, somebody could go to college and become a, a, a get a master's in this and that. I not, not that I'm saying a master. I don't think anybody's a master, but you, you know what I'm saying? The equivalent, like uh, an educational equivalence of having a master's degree. And, and that's what I was after. I just wanted this that bad. And I wasn't going to take no for an answer. And that goes back to power words, because there's a lot of naysayers who will put their negative info into you. They'll judge you on their lame ass. You know, and, and I just, I, I, I look at them now and half the people who said that I couldn't, that were in the martial arts aren't even in it anymore. I don't even see them anymore, you know, and it's just power words are, are, are a big deal. And I, I'll play with students and sometimes maybe I go too far and I, you know, like, you know, we get like, like, a you know, the cut down thing, like, oh my God, you know, you look horrible doing that. You're, you're joking with them. But, you know, and sometimes I, I realize people took it serious. I'm like, oh, wait, we we're just playing. So I always try to go back and reaffirm if somebody's got the talent and the drive, I want to put it on them that they got this and they're doing it and they're, you know, they're rocking it. And, and then when we hit that, that playful time, that's fine for all that. I'm not saying the power of the power word has to be for your whole life. I mean, you got to learn to differentiate it. And that's what I've, I'm still struggling with because there are times I've hurt feelings playing with somebody. I thought, oh, I thought we had a relationship where I could mess around like that. But you, you, you kind of learn that people are sensitive. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and, and at first I would say something and I went, oh, no, I don't want to be that teacher that told me, Ron, you'd be good on an assembly line. You know, and uh, well, and then I think there's a point, Ron, in life where you know, adults, you got to like tell them like it is, you know, and quit trying to no, but, tell people how but, awesome but, they are, because that's what happens. You you find people in groups, this is in photography, right? That you'll look at the work and they're posting, everybody goes, "Awesome job, that looks so great," and so pretty soon that photographer thinks they're just amazing because everyone's telling them that, and you're going, "Okay, someone really needs to talk to her and have a heart to heart no, talk," because no, you know, I get that, but if I'm yeah. the teacher and I'm teaching. Yeah. that's, that's where I'm coming from, yeah. you know, like, uh, and I'm sure a couple of people that will maybe write in to this later and they'll go, yeah, once Ron told me, you know, th that, 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 you know, I, I, I looked like I was a quadriplegic doing it or something like that, you know, and, and, and uh, it, it's just, you know, you play, but my whole thing is whenever I've caught myself and I seen that I was hurting a feeling, I tried to go back and go, no, 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 no. I wouldn't have played with you if I thought that you were, doing that bad. I think you're rocking it. And, you know, it, it's like, um, it's that dark humor. And maybe that was from my time on the department, you know, and, but uh, it, it's power words. Words have a lot of feeling and a lot of me meaning, and you might not think little of it. I, I was just training somebody, um, two guys I was training and I had said something and then all of a sudden uh, they weren't training together anymore. And this is over Zoom. And I'm going, why isn't he coming in? Why isn't he coming in? And I asked the other guy, I don't want to say names. And he goes, well, you, you, you kind of said that you offended him a little bit. And you said he was, he was heavy. And I go, what? And I started trying to think about it because I couldn't remember doing it. And, and I think what it was, I said, uh, we were doing like a knife thing. And I think for somebody your size, you're going to have to move out more. Because, you know, their, their, their girth is bigger and the knife is going to, you know, and I, I didn't mean to offend, but I did. And, and he's, he's upset with me about it right now. And, and I wrote him a note saying, dude, I'm not the skinniest guy in a bunch either. I, you know, I, I get it and I didn't mean it. And, you know, I'm sorry. And I find myself trying to like, you know, kind of fix the mistakes. That's hard. Yeah. Well, he's lucky. He's lucky it wasn't like uh, working with Chai, Master Chai, because he oh. would literally come up and go, sir, I think you're fat. You need to work out. <laughs> right? you go, I'm like, are you kidding me? You just like told this guy right to his face like uh, he's yeah. fat. <laughs> you know what? Uh, there was one time with Chai, and I could say this because it's out there. Everybody knows the story. But he goes, sir, you kick like a girl. And he kept saying it. <laughs> and then finally the person went, uh, Master Chai, I kick like a girl because I am a girl. He goes, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was a woman and and she 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 just nailed him and he he was so embarrassed by it so but you know he has good intentions because he's telling us like you need to work out you need to train right he's a, he's not doing it to be you know vindictive no, 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 or whatever no, no. i think it's, it's a language just, thing a barrier yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it would always shock me when he's at the table and he's like telling like uh, you know, like look at him and said, So you you need to look lose weight, you you're too fat. I'm like, oh my god, I go, really? That's pretty to the point, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, some of the like I said, this whole cancel culture it's like Penn State right now, you know, they're getting the 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 rid of the the whole class. You can't use freshmen, you know, anymore because and I'm like, Okay, so it's it's like where do we stop at? I mean we always knew it, just man or female, it didn't matter. You were a freshman first year, right? Okay, get, all right, get rid of that. Okay, fine. Now they want to get rid of, you know, even upperclassmen because it designates you're a different class. It's like pretty soon you're going like, okay, uh, you, she, what, no, can't do that. I got to say you, I uh, can't, you know, can't. It's just kind of, in a way, it's like, are you kidding? It's just getting out of hand, right? Why, we're going to fend someone because they think they're, if you say upperclassmen, you're not in that class, uh, you know, it's it just, I think people just sit there and try to figure out all these things that we should do. And then what happens is it's just an awkward situation because you never know what to say, right? What, what do you want me to, how do you want to be referred to? You know, because uh, I mean, I remember when I was, uh, and, I, and I've never in, in my entire life had a, you know, a racist bone in my body. I'm, I've got, when I was growing up, I mean, I had to go experience through that. But I remember one time I was working with um when I was ready, about ready to go into service at a school, I was working at the mess hall, and I remember I taught. I I said one of the ladies about a color or something. This is what the word "colored" was. You said it. You know, it wasn't a derogatory thing. And she goes, she just got all me when she says, "I'm black," and oh, I'm sorry. I just you can see my color, my skin. I didn't know. I mean, I wasn't like I was doing anything. I just and then and then pretty soon it was um, I'm Afro American, and so it's like. I was always like, okay, awkward. I don't know what, what, am I correct? Am I going to say that? And it was the same with Asians when people were calling them Orientals. And that was like a, a derogatory name. Well, to this day, people say Oriental. I go, you know, Oriental is a rug. It's not what we, it's not what we are. We're Asians, right? But it's like so awkward because a lot of people don't mean to in any way to be racist or do that, but they just don't know, right? Like oh. I didn't know out of high school what, what you know. Oh. A long time ago, um, uh, Ted Lukai, you remember Teddy? Yeah. He, he was in Chicago and we all went to work out with him. And uh, <laughs> it's so funny because um, in, in Chicago, vato means something else, you know? So there was, there was some Mexican guys in their training. They're like, hey, man, you guys are cool vatos. And, and, and I guess in California back then, it, it wasn't a, a slight and, and, in uh, Chicago back then, it was like almost calling them the N word, yeah, you know, and uh, and I just remember they were like, and and people had to explain, or he had to go, well, wait, man, look at almost like what you did because he's very very Asian looking, you know, and he almost looks, he's dark complected, like maybe of Latin persuasion or Spanish, you know, and he's like. I didn't mean nothing, you know, and, and they weren't happy. You know, it got smoothed over, but it's just what Oriental means to one person, way different to the other. And, and you know, as a white man, all I could say is I don't walk in those shoes and I don't know what it feels like. And I try to be compassionate and aware of it. And, uh, you know, it, it's just I'm ignorant. I will make mistakes and i try to make up for them if i do and uh you know and i that's where i see you came from you know you weren't trying to be you know like hey you're you're colored or whatever you know so. yeah i mean because that to me back then that was a polite term because the n-word was the bad one so you know and you know you kind of colored back first i learned was a, just a nice way of saying it but then it they didn't want it no one wanted to be called that i didn't know i kind of like i missed the meeting for that one you know but she was up and down all over me about that and i was like well i'm sorry i i didn't mean that i mean i just didn't know i mean i was like out of high school i mean i was like young dumb i didn't know you know yeah, yeah. So. yeah. a lot of it seems to be almost over micromanaging of things you know what i mean like i need a handbook to know how to speak to anybody these days and it's it's you're tripping yourself up constantly and people are arguing over things that actually don't make a big difference in the bigger picture that they would like to make a difference in you know it, it doesn't it doesn't because like let's take the me too thing you know uh 
Yeah, it's a legitimate thing. It happened. Are people abusing the the privilege they get to complain about it now and and targeting and you know nope. going on like that's oversensitive, hypersensitive feeling about it? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, it, it's so funny. Do you remember the whole thing about like uh, I think it was a couple of years back. Uh, I think a couple of actresses had been uh, molested in a hotel room. And um, I remember some friends that I have who are not part of the movie industry were like, well, they're stupid for going to a hotel room in the first place. And I go, wait a second. No, that's not fair. You know nothing about our industry. Because if you know anything like, you, you know, the AFM, mm-hmm. have you ever been to it, Cliff? Yep. Yep. I have. Where's it held? Hotel uh-huh. rooms. Yeah, hotel oh, room. Along, Santa yeah. right? Yeah. And, and every room is a hotel room. So you got if you want to go in for an audition or a meeting, it's in a hotel room. That's the standard. That's the way it is. So for these people who know nothing about our industry, they're condemning all these women for being stupid walking into a hotel room. And like, well, wait a minute, that's the standard. This is a common practice, and it's been for more years than I've been involved in the whole Hollywood scene. So to say they're stupid when you know nothing paints a picture that's not fair, but are there other people who might have a legitimate point or maybe have done something stupid to where they went in a hotel room and they got, they, they got molested, accosted. Sure. But to paint a broad picture, you know, or or paint it with a broad brush, that's not fair. And and for for the colored thing, I'm sure somebody doesn't Hey, that colored boy, it's so bad you know, or to call them the N word or call them, you know, I mean, I just try to give a person that respect and let them be called what they want to be called. You know, I, I, I want the same thing. I I don't know a a lot of people who have gotten their doctorates and you call them, Hey, Mr. Whatever. And it's like, well, it's actually doctor, whatever they earn that, let them have it. You know, if you went up to picture being, you're a military man, picture going up to somebody and say, Hey, uh, uh, officer Powell. It's like, wait a minute. (laughs) You know, Colin Powell wouldn't appreciate that. Would he, you know, it's just, he earned that title. Give him the title. And if somebody wants to be called grand wizard or whatever, I'll give it to him. Is it going to hurt me? You know, uh, I, I might stop it at your majesty, but. Let people have- I think the balance there too is that, that if if I if I offend you by calling you something that you don't want to be referred to as or however it is going to be, then you can educate me on what you want to be, but don't get upset me on on the first draw because that's the uh-huh. problem there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right, and, and and that's that. I'll equate that going back to your your when you said colored because at one point it might have been the acceptable term like like now an Eskimo that's that's a bad term now. To say Eskimo, I didn't know that. No, I didn't know that either. See, you just educate me something I didn't know. Well, the Inui, you know, and and that's the correct term. So okay, or or or, or you know, like maybe taking the um, the Indians, the, the 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 sticker off of the Redskin helmet and not calling them that. You know, that's valid. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's just you know. I, I think give people the respect that they deserve, and if if you have these things out here like. Uh, um, Uncle Ben's and Aunt Jemima and all that. And uh, what do they call Uncle Ben's now? Um, uh, Ben's Choice or something. I don't think that's the point of having a black man on the cover. I think they're saying he's a servant that's doing this for you. I bet you Uncle Ben didn't invent, you know, his, his rice or whatever, you know, or Aunt Jemima didn't invent that syrup. They just stuck that label on there because it just said something. And we need to to be a little bit empathetic for people and what they're seeing that, 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 that is. So anyway, I go back on that, that, that one, that one throws me a little bit though, honestly, because I I mean, I grew up with it. You know what I mean? Like I just, I never picked being that way. You know what I mean? As being something that was negative. I was like, Oh, Aunt Jemima's doing this for us. Okay. Uncle Ben's doing that for us. But I felt like I was a part of the family, I guess. I never looked at it as like a servitude thing. Well, the yeah. family even wanted to keep it. They, they were like, no, we really liked it. I mean, the family that came I, from, so he's just like, I go back we, and forth. I go back and forth, you know, like uncle uh, Orville Redenbacher got to do his commercials. I didn't see uncle Ben out there doing his commercials. You know, you know what I mean? And I, I kind of, I can see their side. I can. Yeah. And, and, and you know, maybe, maybe the family liked, having it i don't know if there was an uncle ben's family i'm sure there was but are they profiting anything from it and and the message it's conveying 
you know, and, and you might look and say, it's the guy on a box, his face on a box. I think it's a bit more than that. I do. I think if you really research, I bet you, if you, and that's one of the episodes we should do is we should pick an item and we should research its history. And, and I'll bet you that we'll, we'll be really surprised on a lot of what it is. And it might be one way or the other. It might be like, oh, it's a whole lot of about nothing. Or it's like, oh my God, what they went through and where, where this is from it, you know? One thing that you said, Larry, about people getting upset without knowing, I mean, I think it gets back to using one of uh, Stephen Covey's seven habits. I mean, seek to understand before you're understood, right? Don't go jumping to conclusions yet because you don't know. I mean, I don't, maybe I didn't even know that. Don't assume that it, it's someone's using a racist term because, you know, didn't know, right? And so I think if we could be a little bit more, everyone, before they jump and get upset, you know, try to find out, well, did you not know that that was offensive? No, man, I really didn't know. I'm sorry, you know. Uh, do, we, do you, you remember the actor Vic Moreau? Yeah. Remember how he died? Not bad. Remember, remember how he died? Twilight Zone, the movie? That's a whole nother story, but, but horrible film industry crap. But that episode was so poignant. You, do you, you know the episode of what they were trying to say? He was a racist man. He woke up and it was almost like a quantum leap thing. You still know, see it was Vic Moreau, but everybody seen him as a black man or an Asian yeah. man, you know, and uh, it, it's, it's a really walking in the shoes, just like Larry picked up that shoe and just showed us it, you know, you know, don't talk about somebody until you walked a mile in their shoes, you know, and there's something to that. And, and so when I hear people complain or, you know, and, and, and protest something, I try to really like, before I have a knee jerk re a reaction, try to weigh it out. And sometimes I, I mean, I see it, you know, um, there's just so much of it too now though, you know, everybody's got a cause and and it's good, but it's hard to keep up. Where, where, where do you stop? Or where do you start? And where do you stop? It's like, okay, this is going on. And then I've, I've tried to like understand the cause and then I'll say something later and they go, well, no, 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 it's a little different now. It's I go, Oh, I didn't keep up. It's evolved more since, since the change, you know? So yeah, it's, it's feelings. And they're important. It goes back to power words. It's all power words. So anyway, so guys, we are, I think, at our time. Yeah. So, so. Um, yeah, this was, this was uh, um, I think it's important that we talk about it. I, I, I'd like to touch on it more, but I'd like to get on it with somebody like Steve Gold. He'd be interesting to hear a philosopher talk about this, you know, with those eyes, you know, looking at it with his eyes. So. All right. Uh, anything before we log out? Larry, you're going to put all the links in there, right? For Yep. I already, already placed uh, one in there for the uh, the free digital download of uh, Ron Balicki's book, which is awesome. So, And that's a great way, like we were talking about earlier, just stay up to date. Um, I know that uh, Cliff's got some cool coupon codes like he was talking about that are going to be going out with the launch. You'll be up to date. You'll kind of know what's happening as things are happening, probably faster than social media, to be honest because we've got so many different pipelines to fill there. Uh, going back to social media though, you know, one of the biggest shifts that we've done is that this podcast had moved from Ron Balicki's page over to Seeking the Path podcast as its own page. And so we wanna encourage you guys, A, to like the page, and then B, to go and share the podcast, put it out there. Um, we know that this time isn't always the best time for everybody. And we've got people at all different time zones too. So we're doing a pretty good job here of getting the YouTube page for the Mars Action Group up to date. And it, literally, we just uploaded episode 11 this morning, right? So if you missed any of the episodes and you're trying to find where are they at on Facebook or anything, you can also go to the YouTube page for Mars Action Group and actually be able to watch the episodes in their entirety there too. So there'll be some more cool stuff coming up on that. Um, but the big stuff is, you know, stay up to date, keep looking, keep listening, right? Which is awesome. And uh, keep showing up here. More juice. Yeah. And, f and feel free to invite your friends too to groups because, you know, the martial art research system is growing now. And I found that some people, members are actually inviting their friends in to be part of that group. So, you know, that's a good way to help us out and start getting our numbers up in, in that group also. With that, um, just have a good week and we will see you next week. All right. All right. Take see care. You guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.